Hey gurus, John Scolton here to talk to you about deploying Web Gateway in Amazon Web Services, or more commonly known, AWS. The move from on-premise to the cloud has been in high demand over the past couple years, and as such, we at McAfee have been beefing up our cloud capabilities. So I'm happy to demonstrate for you how you can leverage Web Gateway in AWS. Here's an overview of what I'll be covering in this demonstration. To start, you'll need to get access to the beta and an Amazon machine instance ID. You can get this from the McAfee Web Gateway beta team by emailing dl underscore mwg in AWS beta at mcafee.com with your AWS account ID and preferred region. Once received, we'll provide you with an AMI ID. You'll need this AMI ID to perform the steps outlined in this video. So, with the AMI ID in hand, we can configure the instance settings, security group, and key pair. After the instance is deployed and started, we'll log into the command line using the key pair. On the command line, we'll get the UI password, and when we have the UI password, we can log in and apply the license and configure the Web Gateway security policy. For this demo, it's important to note that the Web Gateway's management ports, the UI, the command line, and the proxy port must be protected, otherwise they could be misused by the outside world. So we'll go over example reference architectures to get ideas flowing. And lastly, we'll go over the gotchas and differences between an AWS MWG and an on-premise MWG. To get started, we'll log into the AWS console. Some organizations may have a single sign-on portal or individual accounts. The account ID can be found by clicking on the drop-down next to your username. Take note of this for the beta team. Next, select the region you wish the beta team to deploy the AMI to. Once you have the account ID and region, email the beta team to get your AMI ID. Once you have that, we can proceed on to the next steps. With the AMI ID in hand, we'll move to the EC2 page under AMIs. In the search, we'll drop in the AMI ID and search private images. This private image will be provisioned by the McAfee Web Gateway team to your organization. After searching, the Web Gateway AMI should appear. We'll launch the instance to select the instance type and configure it. For single user testing, the M4 large is adequate. Minimum for production is the M4 Extra Large. Recommendation for production is the M4 2 Extra Large. For the walkthrough, I've chosen the minimum for production, the M4 Extra Large. In the instance details, you can customize as needed, but the network should remain as default. Web Gateway requires at least 80 gig of storage for production. The volume type can also be adjust, adjusted as needed. This is optional, but tags can be added to your instance if you require them for tracking purposes. In my case, I'm just setting a tag for the type as MWG. Next, we'll configure the security group. This is an important step. Depending upon how you'll be using your web gateway will determine the rules that you should configure. Command line and UI traffic should be restricted to prevent tampering. SSH is listening on port 22 and the UI is listening on port 4712. In my security group, I'm only allowing access from my IP. The HTTP proxy listener 9090 must also be restricted until further controls can be applied, otherwise it may be used as an open proxy. Later in the video, I'll go over methods for securing the proxy listener. For now, all listeners will only accept traffic from my external IP. Next, we'll configure a key pair, which will be used to access the command line. I'm going to create a new key pair, and I've called it mwg-aws. Now we can go ahead and launch the instance. The instance should be starting up now. It usually takes around 5 to 10 minutes. I've cut the video for brevity. When the web gateway is ready, there are two health checks from the status checks page that will show us past. So we'll just wait for that. All right, the first check passed. It's waiting on the second, and there it goes. So to log into the command line, we'll be using PuTTY. So we'll need to convert the key 
from a PEM file to a PPK. This can be done with PuttyGen fairly easily. We'll import the key, give it a name, and export it as a PPK file. Once exported, Putty now has a key file it can use to log in. So we'll pull the DNS name from the AWS console and then drop it back into Putty. Then configure the key under connection SSH auth and browse for the private key file, the PPK, and we'll save the Putty session as AWS MWG for later use. And we'll go ahead and open the session and we'll log in as ec2-user. This is the user that the private key was created for. This is also different from what you might be used to from on-premise MWG. And we're in. The banner for the ec2-user includes the instance specific admin password for logging into the UI. So let's open the UI and we'll browse to the UI on HTTPS on port 4712. And we're gonna download the Java Web Start UI and log in using admin. So we'll just continue through the prompts, wait for it to download. And we'll run the Web Start UI, type in the username of admin, go back to the putty session, copy the initial UI password, paste it in, and then hit login. We'll proceed, get logged in, and the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is apply the license. So we'll accept all the agreements here. Go to configuration, license, and I've already got the license downloaded. But once the license is downloaded and applied, the Web Gateway can get started on downloading the URL, anti-malware, and other updates it's gotta do. After we've applied the license, we can go ahead and change the UI password because I can't remember really big strings like that. So this can be done under accounts by double clicking on the administrator account and using the set new password option. Now we'll want to configure some basic rules in the web gateway to protect it from unauthorized use. I'm going to import some rules which will enforce a good baseline security for a cloud-based proxy. The first is security rules, so I'm going to import from file. I'm going to go to my desktop where I've got those rules already created. So we're going to import that using the rule set library, and we're going to move these rules to the top because we want them to be applied first whenever a new transaction comes in. So we'll add the second one uh, from the file, the authentication and authorization rule set. We'll auto solve conflicts and refer to existing. And again, we'll move this one to the top. So the first rule set is the security rules. If we click show details on this, what these rules basically do is trust only specific addresses that are sending the X forwarded for header. The X forwarded for header is used by upstream proxies to understand the actual source IP of the request. With this rule in place, the X forwarded for will only be used if the downstream proxy's IP is in the list allowed downstream proxy list. Next is, auth is authentication. For this, I've already imported the authentication and authorization, which use and reference the MACV client proxy and Kerberos authentication rules. MACV client proxy is software that's installed in the endpoints. Its main purpose is to intelligently redirect web traffic to the web gateway or the web gateway cloud service. It also provides authentication information about the endpoint that it's redirecting traffic for. Kerberos authentication was chosen here because it's ideal for situations where Web Gateway cannot communicate with the domain. It simply relies on the key tab file in order to authenticate users. Both of these forms of authentication are in place and can work in parallel to give extra flexibility and security. If you have questions about setting up MCP or Kerberos, we have best practices in the community for both. Next, we'll go over reference architectures to get your creative juices flowing on how you can use the web gateway in AWS. The idea behind this reference, reference architecture is simple. Web gateway replaces the traditional on-premise web gateway. And your main office, remote users are all using your web gateway in AWS to provide security for that web traffic. So AWS rules it all here. The next is 
web gateway in AWS supplements what you have on premise. So it's in this architecture, the main office has web gateway on premise and the branch or remote users leverage the AWS infrastructure. Policy is synced between the on-premise web gateway and the AWS web gateway for consistent policy wherever the user may be. Here we're taking a hybrid approach similar to supplementing the on-premise infrastructure. In this case, the AWS web gateway may be reserved for only some traffic or just for managing the hybrid policy in the web gateway cloud service. This allows you to manage the web gateway hybrid policy without having a need for an on-premise device. Next here, we've got Web Gateway deployed as an ICAP server, where it can scan traffic from on-premise and cloud-based apps for malware and policy violations. Using Web Gateway as an ICAP server allows for great flexibility in coding your application, all thanks to the rule engine. ICAP responses can be customized and tailored to meet the toughest application requirements. The Gateway into Malware engine will also be used to scan for advanced threats and provide zero-day protection. And the gotchas for an AWS Web Gateway, there is no transparent proxy options available. So anything that uses the McAfee network driver like proxy HA, transparent router, or bridge, and also WCCP won't work. Uh, no caching is available on web, an AWS Web Gateway because it doesn't really make sense. There's a lot of disk uh, space requirements for that. So it, it's not available. Also, any settings that are not available in your AWS Web Gateway will be grayed out. Thank you for that. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I hope that gave you some good ideas.